Crash Landing was supposed to be a reboot of the Crash Bandicoot franchise that was going to be developed by Radical Entertainment, which is the company that was behind the past three Crash Bandicoot console titles. It was going to be on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and the Wii by Radical Entertainment, while a separate developer would develop the DS counterpart to resemble the console versions. A kart racer named Crash Team Racing was planned to be released simultaneously with Crash Landed, but I may tackle that another day. Pre-production for the title started as early as October 2008, which was the same month Find Every Mutant was released. As previously mentioned, this is going to be a reboot for Crash, so this game would serve as an origin story. After being mutated by Cortex, Crash would be provided with the task of saving all the bandicoots Cortex had locked up, because they are regular unmutated defenseless bandicoots. These bandicoots were referred to as bandicoots. Dingo Dial played a large role in the game. Examples are in some animations that show him shooting baby bandicoots out of a cannon. Entirely new enemies would be present to halt Crash's progression, such as a queen of a colossal firefly hive and a vicious land shark. The gameplay would be slightly refined, with little additions such as the invention system, which would allow players to use items they found and invent items to help aid Crash reaching his destination. Some examples of this would be adventures like the Frog Zooka, which would be created by sticking a frog in a bottle. It could suck in enemies, real objects out of reach, and also could catapult Crash when needed. If you had a few bottles of fireflies, some sticks, and a rope, you could also create a jetpack. Some vehicles you could use were a hang glider and a hog, returning from the original Crash Bandicoot. Crash could still climb walls, like in My Never Beat Me. Crash would keep his health bar too, and depending on how much damage were taken, he'd lose his pants. Levels revolved in a semi-open world like Crash Twin Sanity by having open atmosphere and a slightly linear design. I did find an animation for an enemy that was a sea urchin. As Crash came closer to it, multiple states would be triggered to show its awareness of Crash. Wumperfruit were present in concept art, but in in-game screenshots, it seems like Crash would be collecting mojo. The world would have weather effects in a day and night cycle, and Crash would encounter larger enemies at night. It is unknown if the weather had any effect on the game though. The game's soundtrack would most likely have been by Gabriel Mann because his SoundCloud holds a track named Crash Landed that fits with the game's style, and he's worked with Spiral Mouth on Crash Twin Sandy's soundtrack, so this is pretty safe to assume. Marketing for Crash Landed would have been different than Crash's marketing in his past years. A press kit was created that would include a special collector's DVD. It would have featured a demo and a map of Wumpa Island. The map would show where in the demo you could visit. The map would also feature a coupon for a McWumpa Burger. When Radical Entertainment merged with Activision, half the employees at Radical Entertainment were laid off. Three games were cancelled, and those three were Scarface 2, a Marvel movie tie-in, and a game based off one of J.R.R. Tolkien's works. The remaining members of those teams were put to work on Crash Landed and Prototype 2. Half the people working on Crash Landed were the devs who had been making platform games and animation style work, while the other half came from teams that were open world realistic games such as Prototype. So there was a lot of debates among team members about how Crash Landed should have been designed. They stayed in conceptual stages for months, unable to agree as a team on almost anything. Some people wanted to turn Crash to a first-person shooter. Many employees argued to make it a platform and go back to the series route, but creative differences affected the game's production in several ways. Another problem was that they were told to make a AAA Crash title, which they felt was a stretch. They felt that way because Crash just didn't have the track record in the past of being AAA, and it was a pretty big goal to reach. Mind Over Mute was only made in 9 months, and it wasn't nearly close to being AAA, and they were expected to turn Crash Landed into gold. Multiple developers I had contacted that told me that the game was also winding up to be a fun game. But I was told that the player basically runs around in an open world that was way too small, and you rescued the little bandicoots that were locked up by Cortex and that was it. Production had only made it past the early prototype. A few demos were made, but they weren't near shippable. Then, in February 2010, Crash Landed was cancelled. Then that's when the Crash Landed team was laid off. Cancellation can be blamed on creative differences among the team, and the game not turning out to be that fun. Renegade Kid, the developer behind Zeo Drifter and Mutant Mudge, created a demo for the DS version of Crash Landed, but it's unsure if the pitch was rejected or not. Way forward, the company behind Shantae and various licensed games also created a pitch, but we haven't saw a demo of that yet. This is the only asset we've saw from their pitch, but if you want to play what the pitch became, that exists. And it's called Galactic Tazball. Yes, this is true. They used a crash landed pitch to set up the game. It sucks that it was cancelled because the game looked amazing. I believe what Crash Landed could have became would have surpassed the greatness that Naughty Dog's Crash titles held. Perhaps in the future, if the next Crash title won't get cancelled, it can live up to what Crash Landed was supposed to be. 
So, what cancelled game should I cover next? Thank you for watching, and please subscribe if you liked what you saw. Please check out my other videos if you find them interesting, and have a good day.